If you could have a conversation with your grandmother when she was 18 and ask her what her dream life would look like, what would she say? Probably to own a piece of land, maybe a house, a husband, a few children, and maybe a dog. Not too long ago, this is what life looked like, and people were happy and content. They weren't suffering, they had clothes, food, a roof over their heads, and love in the house, and that was enough to be seen as success. But what does the word success represent today? Didn't know you could move like that Two-step real smooth like that All night get down like that Turn around make it bounce like that Didn't know you could hang like that Sipping on champagne like that Turn up get ill like that Didn't know you would chill like that Like that Over the past few years, but especially now, what seems to be trending on social media is the whole luxury lifestyle content. We're seeing more and more young millionaires and six-figure earners arising, and they are making it known. Now, sharing your success isn't a bad thing, and I'm not here to condemn those who do, because I'm definitely guilty of it. And I don't think it has to have a negative effect on you, depending on your mindset and how you look at it. But over time, this can definitely end up being unhealthy. Every day we're bombarded with people sharing their successes, whether it's a new house, designer clothing, new cars, new jobs, a trip. It could literally be anything, but luxury lifestyle is definitely something that's being pushed and causing a lot of people to feel drained as they feel like they need to continue to keep up with their peers and they feel like they're falling behind. I myself am a social media influencer and here's what I've learned about the damages of social media and things I remind myself of when I start feeling inadequate, not only as a consumer, but a content creator as well. Social media is exactly that. It's media, okay? Media. It's not based on reality, but rather what gets clicks and makes the most money. These platforms want to get paid, and of course, the way they get paid is by keeping you on their platforms for as long as possible. The longer you stay, the more money they make. Therefore, you're not necessarily shown the truth, but rather what the platform is seeing makes them the most money. Often, they'll play off of your emotions and use things like fear and your want for more to get paid. And this is why you should never take what you see too seriously. Brands know this, and so do influencers. A lot of them rent cars, houses, Airbnbs, and a lot of them do quite some crazy shit to make themselves appear as though they're living a lifestyle because they know that kind of content brings in the cash. You need to remember that you're only seeing things from the outside. It's easy to look at all the materialistic things that people have acquired, but always remember that you don't actually know anything. I cannot tell you how many times I've seen people borrow other people's stuff so that they can show off online, whether it be cars, clothes, jewelry, whatever. But social media is fake and you can literally be sitting there comparing yourself to somebody who's potentially broker than you, but just flexing other people's stuff. Some people have all this stuff but are also in serious debt and a lot of them are doing some crazy things like selling their body and their dignity for a check. Now is that worth it? Whatever the case may be, always remember that most people won't come on the internet and share their failures and their bad days. They will always come and make everything look shiny on the outside when things are potentially crumbling on the inside. A lot of times people do or buy things not necessarily because they can afford it, but because they think it's gonna get them clicks. And I'll use myself as an example for this. Now I got myself a gorgeous apartment that cost me quite a penny and can I afford it? Yes. However, could I have stayed in my cheaper apartment and saved more money to maybe buy a house instead of giving myself extra monthly expenses? Yes. Now, did I necessarily do this for clicks? No, but being on YouTube, I would always see other YouTubers getting their lovely condos and I always thought to myself, when I get 100,000 subs, then I'll be happy. Or when I get that apartment, I'll be happy. Or when I get that kind of car, I'll be happy. Now the 100,000 subs came, the apartment came, and what I quickly noticed is that no matter how much I climbed up, it was never enough. I always wanted more. I felt happy for a few seconds, and as soon as I got back online, that happiness was gone, and it was on to the next goal. Unless you truly learn to be happy within yourself, there is no amount of materialistic things or success that you will have that will make you happy. You will always be looking for the next best thing. And although yes, wanting to continuously grow is definitely a good thing. And I don't personally believe that you should ever stop growing. And you couldn't even if you tried because we grow through life experiences. But regardless, 
learning to be grateful for what you have and learning to be present so that you can actually enjoy and soak into your achievements is also really important because if you don't take the time to do this, you will still feel like a failure even if you achieve billionaire status because you're always focusing on what you don't have rather than taking the time to be grateful for the things that you do have. Now, when analyzing myself, I realized that a lot of the things that I achieved, I didn't necessarily do for myself. I did it because my inner child was literally screaming to be heard and accepted. You see, growing up, I wasn't the best in school. I failed a grade. I went to adult ed. I didn't get the best grades. And there was never really a bright future scene for me. I was told that the height of my success would be as a McDonald's cashier. And I carried that with me for quite a long time. So while my friends excelled past me, I felt inadequate and it got to the point where I aimed really, really high, but not in a healthy way. I aimed high to the point where I would constantly try to stay ahead of my peers because of my fear of falling back behind again. Eventually, I found myself constantly trying to prove myself to others, and that caused me to be hyper-focused on always achieving more and more for myself. And when I really look at it, it wasn't because those things genuinely made me happy, but to prove a point. I never received validation as a kid, and so it manifested into me constantly looking for it as an adult by trying to outdo myself constantly. Now, this may not be the case for you, but I'm sure it is for a lot of people, so comment down below if you can relate. But bottom line, we need to remember that this is the matrix. It's a simulation, a game. And the only way you could get a shot at winning this game is by playing it rather than letting it play you. So what are some things that you could do to start playing the game? So I think a good place to start would be to get off of social media, not only as a consumer, but also as a creator slash poster. And I'm of course not saying that you have to get off completely, but just try to limit the amount of time that you spend on social media as social media literally has the ability to get straight into your subconscious mind, just like music, right? The things that you see, the things that you hear are absorbed and stored in your subconscious mind, especially if you're repetitively seeing them. If you're an overachiever like me, one of the things that I'm doing is I'm trying to go a little bit off grid. So I'm personally not posting anything about my personal life or achievements on social media for a while. And I'm a content creator, so I am going to post, but I'm just not going to post anything about my personal life. I'm simply going to go a little bit more low key to help me get rid of that feeling of always having to prove myself. People know you're smart, they know you're good, and that's all they need to know. If they don't know anything, then there's nothing for you to prove. And on top of that, you're going to reduce the amount of evil eye you have on you because as we saw in my Shanquella Robinson video, which you should definitely check out, jealousy could definitely take you far. So going a little bit off grid is also going to be a good spiritual cleanse for you. You remove your eyes and your ears from the things that cause you pain, sadness, anxiety, but you also remove yourself from the vision of those who don't want your success. And that gives you power because the less people know about you, the more powerful you are. And since you're not posting as much, then you don't really feel like you have anything to prove. And you can kind of just work on your things without feeling like you're falling behind or feeling like you need to catch up with other people. The second thing you can do is take control over the content that you consume. So if you are going to be on social media, I'm definitely on social media, what you can do is try to unfollow the pages that don't align with the things that you want or that make you feel any type of way or any negative emotion. Follow pages that will feed your mind and your spirit with positivity and information that will educate you and help you grow as a person and that will motivate you. It's hard to be in a negative mind space when you're constantly filling it with positive, healthy things. So when you see things that make you feel a certain way, make you feel uncomfortable, or once again, trigger any negative emotion, either unfollow that page or click the don't show me anymore button so that you can start taking control over the content that you consume and feed your subconscious and conscious mind with healthy content. While you do this, create an actual plan and act on it. Keyword, act. Whether it be a plan to get you to face the issues that are holding you back from achieving your goals. And let me know if you guys want a video on shadow work so you can actually start finding out the things that are holding you back and face them so that you can grow. Let me know down below. Or whether it's just a plan on how you can actually achieve your goals, just create a plan and work on it in silence. The people we compare ourselves to didn't just get to where they are without effort. And sometimes we don't know how much work and sweat went into creating the lives that they created for themselves. A lot of the times we're comparing ourselves to people who have put in hours that we couldn't even imagine putting in for our own success. Now, though certain things do take time, a lot of the things that you see these rich online gurus do 
are doable, like drop shipping, e-commerce, affiliate marketing, social media. They are all things that are doable. They just require a little bit of upfront effort and the willingness to learn. So while you're off grid, do some research, invest in some courses, write a plan and start working step by step towards it. Keywords step by step. Stop trying to jump to the end and enjoy the process. The hardest thing is usually starting. So if you know you want to do it, just start. And once you actually start your journey and you're busy driving in your own lane, you won't be able to focus on what's going on in somebody else's lane. Think about it. If you're sitting in a passenger seat, then you have all the time in the world to look at what's going on around you. But if you're driving, you're too busy focusing on what's going on in front of you so that you don't crash. And although you might be able to take a quick glimpse at what's going on around, you might be able to catch a quick glimpse, but nothing too long. So go ahead and put the key in the ignition and start driving. And you might be forced to face your front, as my dad would say, and as a result, see the changes that you actually want to see. Now, I know that this is easier said than done, and I myself am also working on this with you guys. I'm right alongside with you guys, but you cannot see the changes that you want to see in your life without a change. So I really hope this video was educational. I really hope it was informative. If it was, go ahead and let me know down below. Support the channel by dropping a like. Go ahead and join the email list to be notified whenever I post new content, as well as for a chance to win one of my monthly prizes. I'll be giving either gifts or cash prizes every month just to show my appreciation to those who show love and support to the podcast. And I will see you guys all in my next one. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.